Yan po ang ating title ng ating message for today. The Risen Christ, Our Living Hope. So in the midst of yung sinayar ni Brother Dan, parang trending yata sa Christian world ngayon yun eh. So let's all stand up and read God's Word. Uh, why do I ask people to stand up? Because dahil matanda na po akong Kristiyano dun sa churches that I've been to, we always stand whenever we do a scriptural reading to show reverence to God's Word. So, let's read together uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. Verse 12, Now, if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But th there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and our faith is also empty. Yes, we are found false witness, witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He has raised up Christ, whom He did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men the most pitiable. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word that as we study today, empower us, Lord God, with your Holy Spirit that we not only learn in our, in our heads, but learn in our hearts that as we go out from this place, we'll desire all the more to obey you and to live lives that will bring glory and honor to you alone. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may, you may be seated. Today, I'll be continuing. Hindi po tayo mag-aaral. Sabihin nyo, tumalo na si Kuya Arnold na sa First Corinthians na siya. Hindi po. We are continuing our study on the book of First Peter. Si Pastor Bong would have given an introduction. That's from what I know. So, uh, siguro yung tatlong famous apostle would be John, na pinag-aralan natin the last time, si Paul, na sumulat neto, at si Peter, because he was the most boisterous among the twelve when the, he was with the Lord. Si, si, si John is known as the apostle who loved to preach about love. Si Paul talks about faith in Christ. Si Peter talks about hope, our living hope. In, in, fact, in fact, when we study First Peter, often yung niluulit yung the living hope. So, not going back to what has been introduced, but introducing a bit of Peter on the basis of what he is remembered often. Si Peter po was the same guy who declared, Who do the people say I am? And who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was he who declared that. And after that proclamation, after a few verses, the Lord told him, Get me behind me, Satan. God talking to Paul, out to Peter and telling him, Get behind me, Satan. Because you do not see what God really wants us to do. So, then, Cynthia, he is the apostle who was able to walk on water till he finally parang started to lose faith now. And then the Lord helped him out. But most likely, he is so famous because he is the apostle who denied the Lord three times. It was the time when he was, they were there at the house of the high priest Caiaphas and twice he denied. And this is the same guy who said he is willing to die with the Lord. In fact, he showed his willingness. Remember the, in the garden when the Lord was arrested? Si Peter yung bumunot ng kanyang ita at tinagpas yung tenga ni Malchus. 
Who oh, talagang ready to die, ano ha? And yet, the, the Lord restored Malchus's ear and he reprimanded Peter. And he... But after that, the last time, yung account sa kanya, and I love, I love this account, found sa Luke 22 verse 61 to 62. And this is what it says. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster cross, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. So of all the apostles, most likely to see Peter, you maraming ups and downs in life. That's why probably when he was writing this epistle, the first Peter, he's this guy who has seen himself as a hopeless man and yet full of hope. Because he's got a living Savior. And hopefully that would remain the same with us. Sabi nga sa binasa natin, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, kung dito lang tayo may pag-asa sa Panginoon, we are of all men most pitiable. Because our hope is living, it is eternal in nature. So hopefully that would give us Clear. Bakit si Peter? Bakit, why did I get this to introduce the book in a way? A lot of people would would say would have. If you were in the Lord Jesus Christ, should think about think this with me. Kung kayo ang nasa paanam panginoon, and one of the guys who had said, "I will be willing to die with you," and yet he has denied you three times, and the Lord took a third. The Bible describes it this way. He took a turn and he looked at Peter. I'll give you some options. If, if this is not to say anything wrong, huh? but just, just to make you think. If it's Brother Jonathan, and it, he was in God, the Lord Jesus Christ's shoe, and he looked at Peter, sabi nga ni Brother Jonathan, ko yung tingin ko nakamamatay, patay na si Peter. Diba? But then, talagang yung, kita mo yung eyes ni Brother Jonathan pag nag-galit yan. Talaga, talaga matutunaw ka. Diba? Or, most likely, yung eyes ng common na tao. Titingnan si Peter. Kita mo, sabi ko na sa iyo eh. Or, but the way I look at it, when the Lord gave Peter the glance and Peter saw this, he saw God's grace and mercy. That's why when he realizes, sinabi na to ng Panginoon sa akin. Eh. And we are blessed because we can read it. Before he betrayed the Lord, the Lord prophesied to Peter that he would betray him. Now we have the blessing of, ay, we, re, we can read it. Sinabi ng Panginoon, no, it's in the account, nasa Biblia na natin. Pero it made Peter realize the need for him to go back to the Lord and repent. And eventually, yun na yung last time after the Lord went through the trial, walked the road to Calvary, then crucified. He was not there anymore. No more account until the Lord has resurrected. And in fact, when the angel was te te telling the ladies, go tell Peter and my brothers to, that, I, that the angel was reminding them, tell Peter and my brothers that I would see them in Galilee. Peter's name was mentioned sa so, so book of Mark, a specific Peter. And Peter has a lot of names. Alam niyo ba yan? He is known as Sipas. He is known as Simon Peter. He is sometimes being called Simon, the old self. Peter, the new self. And still, all in all, is still a follower of the Lord who still goes down and up, down and up in his Christian life until he witnessed and he talked to the Lord and he was reinstated. From that point on, Pagpasok ng the book of Acts, we saw a new Peter. 
a printer who would go out boldly declare who God is. So hopefully, those are all the, just the backgrounds. So, I have this quotation from, yung si Warren Worsby, matanda rin yan eh. Ano rin yan eh. Siya ang tawag sa kanya, pastor's pastor. This was taken from yung kanyang B-series. Ang tawag ng kanyang B-series sa Peter is Be Hopeful. In the midst of so many circumstances, be hopeful because we know who are yung basis ng ating hope. Sabi niya, to begin with, it is a living hope because it is grounded on the living word of God. The word, the Bible that you're holding is the living word of God. 1 Peter 1.23 Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Yun ang sabi ng 1 Peter 1.23 The living word of God. The in, uh, be, be, tapos sabi niya, and was made possible by the living Son of God who arose from the dead. So, dalawa yung basis natin. Why do we have living hope? We have the living word and the living Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who have risen from the dead. A living hope is one that has life in it and therefore can give life to us. Because it has life, it, has, it grows and becomes greater and more beautiful as time goes on. Time destroys most hope. They fade and they die, then die. But the passing on time only makes a Christian hope that more glorious. That's a quote from, from Warren Worsby. So this is where we'll be studying today. Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So what can we learn from all this? The living hope is based on the living and resurrected Christ. That's why we declare He is alive. And where is He right now? Is He in your life? Well, it is sad when you hear yung testimony like sinabi ni Brother Dan about his friend Siguro, hindi na kailasan nyo, we had this, siguro isang buwan na ngayon, si, yung famous na sumusulat sa Hillsong, si Marty Samson, then there's another writer in America, they have all renounced their faith. Pero, as we study this, let us all realize that the living hope is, ang pinaka-basis natin dito is the living and resurrected Christ and His Word. Christian's assurance in Christ is as certain and assures the fact that Christ is alive. This is probably one of the biggest problems of Christianity nowadays. A lot of people look at Christianity as the feel-good thing. Christianity is, this makes me happy, so it's all good. No. True Christianity is based on Sabi nga, pag binasa nyo, binalikan nyo yung binasa natin. Earlier verses nun, sinasabi niya, ano ba yung, what do we preach? Sabi nga ni Paul, we praise that Jesus Christ was, died, He died, He was buried, on the third day, He rose again. Yun yung pinaka, pinaka gist ng ating pinaniniwalaan. And beyond that, no other feel-good thing can cause us to really walk a life that even in the midst of so many trials and difficulties or even in the midst of you going up and down in your Christian life, the faithfulness of the living and resurrected Christ doesn't change. So let's remember that. 
Then as we study, Peter used the word living six times. You can read it. Dito sa 1 Peter 1.3, 1 Peter 1.23, 1 Peter 2, verses 4 to 5, 1 Peter 4, verses 5 to 6. Here, living means that the believer's hope is what? Sure, certain, and real, as opposed to the deceptive, empty, false hope that this world offers. So what, what are you basing your hope for? Is it the things that you hear from this world that once everything is not right, you lose hope? Or you're basing it on the living Christ who is in your life that in the midst of so many difficulties or even you yourself inflicting suffering because of the foolishness of what we're doing is still is sure because Christ is in you. Amen. This would be the question that we should always answer as we go as we study this. Now let me give you my the three points that hopefully would cause us to realize the why is the reason Christ our living hope. Number one the blessing of our living hope. Blessed be the God the, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. Here, let, let us take some word study. The word blessed, yulohios, is the same word na pinanggalingan nung Alam nyo ba yung mga may, when people died, there would be eulogy when you say good things. You say praises to the, to the person who has died. Dun kina ginamit ito, the word blessed. And yet, when Paul was expressing, when Peter was expressing, it is a desire to really praise God and that should, all believers should start really, really praising God. When he says, blessed be, you can change that to praise be to God. Why? Dapat nga, every, sinimulan mo na rin lang, brother, yung pagkanta ng luma. I am reminded of a song whenever we, yung sa closing, we call doxology. Who, know, who knows that song? Hindi kasi kung magaling kumanta, pag kaunan dito, kakantahin mo eh. Praise God from whom all blessing flows. Praise God, uh, all teacher here below, praise Father. But ganun yung takbo niya. It is all about Him. And you give to Him back all the praises. Why? Because He is our God who blesses us. This is what Paul was simply saying. The very thing that Paul was trying, was telling when he was writing this to those Ay, yung lugar na ito pala, baka, ewan ko kung nasabi ito ni Pastor Bong, is very much similar dun sa letter sa John. This would be Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. So he was writing to those in Galatia, Bithynia, Cappadocia, Pontus. Sa isang lugar yan, modern day Turkey, malaking lugar. Ito yung mga Kristiyano sinusulatan niya, hindi ito isang church lang. Napakalaki. And what was he trying to tell them? Praise God for everything, but most specifically, praise God because the very foundation of your salvation, of your new birth, is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ, based on what? His abundant mercy given upon us. So, what does it mean? Every Christian should praise God. For him being born again. It is entirely God's initiative that we have been included to his family. Not the initiative of us. Wala, wala, tayo, wala, tayo, wala tayo pagmamalaki sa Panginoon eh. Why we are now being called sons of God. It's entirely God and God alone and his work for us. So, 
and it's, it is what? What is anong basis mo doon? Who according to His abundant mercy. So when you say mercy, it talks about the kindness or goodwill towards the miserable and the afflicted. Akala kasi natin, nung makakilala tayo, we're all good. No. We are all in misery, all dead to sin. Ha? Huh? Baka kasi all the while, the, the understanding of the gospel is, oh, yeah, I am good. That's why God has called me into His family. No! No one is good. No, that one. But He demonstrates His love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He was not after those who are, oh, et, etong si, ano, okay na. Bumabait na. Hindi po ganun. Alam ng Diyos na nasa, nasa estado tayo ng we are so miserable in life that even as kaya nga tendency of ng tao in his, in his state of misery, instead of going back to God, going to God, kung hindi mo siya kilala, you, you try to go away from Him. What? Why? Natural tendency. And it took the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that mabag yun. And why? Because of God's mercy towards us. So hopefully, when we, we read that, we, we understand that when we praise Him, we praise Him because of what? The blessing of our living hope that is based on Him alone. Not on what you can do, what you will do later on, not the past accomplishments, none of those. It is only based on our living hope. Actually, nabago kasi yung ponting niyan eh. Nung ako, nung dun dun sa akin binabasa, yung L and H are all caps. Living hope. Because it is based on a person not on anything, anything else. Who, what person? The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our living hope. And that blessing we should always put in our hearts and make sure we praise Him daily. That's why He said, Blessed be the Father. Praise God. Yan ang ibig sabihin niya dyan. Very same din naman sa... O oh, yan. Po. Oh. Ano, al- al- alam niyo ba ano yan? Yan po ay napakagandang halaman doon sa aking bakuran. Sa aming bakuran. Yan o. Oh. Kita niyo yung gardener na tumira niya. Napakaganda po ano. O. Oh. Ano yung tingin niyo dyan? Oh, ano, who, who can give a good answer? What's that? <laughs> yun, yun, yun. Kaya ako tinatanong. Hindi ko siya ma-pronounce. Yun, yung sinabi niyo. Brother Jonathan, what's that? Ayo, ayo. Now, did we, ask, we better ask those who can speak well English. What's it? Hydrangea. Oh, oh, yeah. Hydrangea. You, you know, what state are we? When, when you, when we read these words, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Yung begotten us again has made us born again. And when you talk, this, nung ginamit yan salitang yan, yung bigat dyan is anage, eh, hirap talaga, Greek pa to eh, anage now, to be born again, to, to have one, sa, sa believer, to have one's mind changed, so that he lives a new life, one conformed to the will of God, to a living hope, to produce again. So, yan, kita niya, green thumb ang tumira niyan, kaya, parang patay na siya. But, yung, yung, yung comparison, will end just here. Yan. Yan siya. Oh, pero, pagpunta kay sa amin, hanggang ngayon, ganun pa, patay pa. Wala pa, green thumb si Arnold eh. Everything he touches dies. Pero, yan, 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 So, yung, yung the same word na anagenao can be used as, parang sa spring ba? Kaya ang maganda itong message yun eh. 
when we are being born again, parang spring, when everything sa winter seems to be patay-patay na, parang wala nang kabuhay-buhay ang puno, nagkakaroon siya ng new life whenever there's yung spring comes. Kaya gusto gusto yung... Pero comparison ends there. Kasi tayo, the moment God has put new life in us, it will no longer die. Ginamit lang yung salitang yon, so as to we understand that from this into this, believers stay this way in the sight of God because of the finished work of Christ. So we never lose hope because we'll, because of Christ, we also have that light living in us. So reality po to. So yung sample na yun, ay tayo pala after winter season, pwede na malanta uli. Hindi po. Kasi buhay na tayo. Patuloy na yan. Sabi nga ng wife ko, there are ways to extend the life of the flower, cut it off. Sabi ko, hindi ko na kailangan ng ganong illustration because illustrations stop there. That flower, when winter season comes, would die back to this one. But for us, a believer, even in the midst of the fairy trials of life, suffering, in the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ and God, we are always like this. Perfect in His sight. Oh, similar din pagkakasulat ni Apostle Paul. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Si Apostle Paul nagsusulat dito, The Father of mercies and comfort, oh, and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our what? Tribulations. That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So in the midst of what? Are we just comforted when we are comfortable? No. The comfort that we receive comes more specifically you know, in our tribulations. In the tribulations. Mga pagdadalamati, mga paghihirap, mga pasakit. That is when we experience that's why we should always praise God for He is the source of this blessing because He, are, he is our living hope. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and it comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. This is what the Apostle James is saying. What's the basis? Well, bakit kuya? Bakit? Bakit, namin mas- bakit mo masabing we have this blessed hope. Sabi nga po, the whole gospel is basically nakaupo po dito. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Because He lives, we know we will live. Hindi, hindi po patay yung ating pananampalataya. Kasi kung ang, ang pananampalataya natin is dito lang sa lupa. And when everything ceases, wala na mangyayari, we don't know the future, what, what the future holds for us. Then, sabi nga ni Pablo, tayo yung pinakaawa, kaawa-awa mga nila lang na. Kababa. He indeed was for, foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in the last days for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, said that, so that your faith and your hope and as an are in God. Who is this He? The Lord Jesus Christ. Even before the world was created, God has already foreordained the Lord Jesus Christ to come and to die for those who would be sinning, or those who are all sinning, or those who are all sinners. Pare-pares po yun. We sin because we are all sinners. Hindi po, oh, nagsin ka kasi, hindi yun. Kasi talagang makasalanan ka, kaya magkakasala ka. So, to Him. Yan ha? So, hopefully, so that your faith and hope are worth, saan yung pinag-presyon? Anong pinagbabasihan nyo ng pananampalataya nyo? 
yung emosyon nyo ba na masaya ngayon, mas lulukot bukas, o yung Diyos nating bago pa tayo nila lang, yung plano niya, hindi po tayo plan B. This is His plan. Made from eternity past. That the Lord Jesus Christ will die for us. He would be buried and He would resurrect. So that we may be saved and that we will have that living hope in Him. This is the this this is a the, a discussion. Usapan to ni Martha and and ng Panginoon. This is what He said. This is when Lazarus is, has died and the Lord waited for days before He came and He was already on the point of decay. But what's important here is the Lord reminded him, the, reminded her that the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ is the very basis why we know we have this living hope. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Oh, let me explain a bit. Oh, maaring physically. Sabi nga ni Brother Dan kanina, his friend, hindi ka ba kain ng lechon? Healthy living, exercise, everything. Nagka-cancer. Saan siya nagka-cancer, Brother? Dito sa New Zealand, sa Pilipinas. Dito na. Abuti na lang, dito na. Kung sa Pilipinas yon. Baka sa malamang, so makabilang buhay na siya, he would have died. But even if he dies, because the Lord is the resurrection and the life, if he is really in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will live. That is eternal life reserved for him. And now, sabi nga, and whoever lives for us now, kuya, Why, why will I never die? Eh, the physical body will die. That's a given. That's a, that's a certainty. Sabi niya, ay, ano ba certainty ng mundong binibigay na to? Da, sabi nung dati, dalawa lang, certain. It's, it's mamamatay ka at magbabayad ka ng buwis. Akala ko, hindi sa Pilipinas lang yun. Yung pala, mas certain pala dito yun. Dahil wala pa yung pera mo, binawasan na. Di ba? That's too, 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 too certain. But ito yung certain dito sinasabi. Yes, you may die physically. But spiritually, you, will, you are eternally living because of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in Him, you shall never die. Then the question was, do you believe this? So what's your basis of your living hope? Is it You believing in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or this is what pains me when I hear people say, Oh, I don't want to be, I don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. Sometimes I don't like I don't want to question whether they are true believers or not, or they they have put their trust in the Lord or Jesus or not. It just comes to my mind that do they really know him? Do they really believe Him in such a way that their lives uh, is wholeheartedly given to Him? Or they are there because the, it's the good times. Ito ang sinasabi na nga ng Panginoon. Yes, you can die physically, but spiritually you're alive forever because of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 20-22 But now Christ is risen from the dead and ha- has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Fallen asleep is what? Sinulit ko na yan. Those who have died. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. So, si- kita niyo yung play of words dito? Same word. Cut. May... Capital M yung isa, small M yung isa. Small M refers to Adam, big M refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Let me just give a, 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 
konting paliwanag here ha. When when the Bible says all, it doesn't necessarily mean that because the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, everyone, whether you you believe Him or not, you will be saved. We don't preach universalism Him here. We preach that the all there are those who would put their whole trust in Christ. Yes, He died, but only. Only those who would put their trust in Him will be saved, huh? So let me that, let me make that clear. And what? Thirdly, ano na na? the blessing of our living hope, the basis, our basis is the Lord Jesus Christ and His resurrection from the dead, the blessedness of our living hope. Ano kuya ba yung salitang blessedness? This is the blessing brought about by His divine favor. Parang, you are favored by God because of our living hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not available if you are not a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. To an inheritance undefiled, uh, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Ang kung, kung, kung sa grego natin babasahin yan, yung, yung, yung pagka-describe niya ng inheritance, dito muna tayo sa how this inheritance is described. Incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. Si Si Apostle Peter, kung sa Greek ito niya sinulat, pakikita mo yung kanyang alliteration dito. Yung una, when he said, when he says, incorruptible, ang term na ginamit doon sa Greek, sa Greek is, aftarton. Yung undefiled is amyaton, at yung does not fade away, amaranton. All in Greek hindi ko lang nailagay sa ating PowerPoint. All in A's and ending in N. So, what does it mean? When he, when, when he says, it's incorruptible, it can never perish. This inheritance that we have is unperishable. It is undefiled. Hindi siya mag spoil Hindi siya Itong, itong mamanahin mo, this is not subject to to expiration. Isipin mo, sino ba may hilig sa bag dito? Ay, buti lang, wala si Sis Joy nagtuturo sa Sunday School. Yung, di ba, for us here, usap-usap yung, pamana mo na sa akin yung bag mo. Di ba? Oo. Oh. Um, lalo na ko yung bag eh, ano ba yung mahal na bag na yan? Prado. Prado. <laughs> Oh, Hermes. Eh, eh, di, gusto ko yung Hermes. Kasi yun yung bag ni Mami Junisha. Eh. You, do you know that that bag is subject to ma- masira, mabulok if you don't put it in the right temperature. It should be placed in the right temperature. Uh, climate control. Kaya, yung bag mo, mahal na, papagawa ka pa ng climate control room to store your bag. Or else, hindi mo siya mapapamana sa iba. Bakit? Mabubulok. But our inheritance is not like that. Diba? Yung, yung sasakyan nga natin eh, mas ipamana sa akin ni eh, brother, brother dan yung kain Subaru. Nagdadalawang isip ako. Pang three years lang yun. After that, wala na yung kanyang maintenance, service maintenance. Kailangan mo ng gastusan. Ay wala kang pambayad ng mahal. Diba? So all those are pero yung sa atin, yung ating inheritance that I will later on, later on hindi siya subject doon hindi siya ano he, it, ano in essence, ano yung ini-inherit natin it will remain pure yung pure yung pure gold nga is walang dross, wala na yung mga latak-latak niya, 99.9% ito, very pure. Then, 
when we say does not fade away, eh, yun na yun. Hindi nagpe-fade, hindi po kumukupas ito. Hindi po siya nawawala ng value. Ala. Oh, hindi lang. No, yan, ha? So, ano ba itong, ano ba kuya yung sinasabi mong inheritance? Inheritance here is the possession. That possession is with you. Not later on, but with you now. Ha? Huh? But, kasi, why can I say it's with you now? Because sa ating pag-aaral sa 1 John, we talk about that. He who has the Son has the light. He who doesn't have the Son doesn't have the light. These things I have written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. Eternal life starts now. You already have it. But it would be revealed to you in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's where you see the actual possession that you will have. Very similarly, when Abraham was called out of the land of, of Ur, he knows that God has promised him a, a land for him to possess. But by faith, he knows that the one who gave it to him is the one true God worthy of our faith. So he knows na even if hindi pa niya napopossess yung land, kasi ito si Abraham, nagpaikot-ikot din ito sa pagsunod ng Panginoon eh. Punta sa Haran, punta sa Egypt. So, but he knows that that possession is his, pero to be rebuilt when he reach that land, the promised land. Yun yung po, ibig sabihin ng possession. Kleronomia. Anong ta- sa, uh, sa ibang, ibang more layman's interpretation, this is what it says. The eternal blessedness of the consummated kingdom of God which is to be expected after the visible return of Christ. Eternal blessedness, kaya nga, the blessedness of our living hope. Nasa atin na to. It's eternal in nature. Pag eternal, hindi po ito temporary. Kasi eternal nga eh. Not subject to expiry. Eternal nga eh. Not subject to decay. Kaya nga, you, you, all the things that were written talks about this inheritance. This possession that we now have to be rebuilt when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. Kaya nung kinakanta niyo yung when the road is called up yonder, are you really sure? And are you really able to say, I will be there? If you can say, I will be there, that in- inheritance, that possession is yours. But will be revealed when what? We are all called up yonder to be with Him. So hopefully we understand. Huh? Uh, another another definition the share with which an individual will have that eternal blessedness sure tayo dito because of the lord jesus christ our living hope oh give you a note note the description of this inheritance for it is totally unlike any earthly inheritance. For one thing, it is incorruptible, which means nothing can ruin it. Because it is undefiled, it cannot be stained or cheapened away. It will never grow old because it is eternal. It cannot wear out, nor can it disappoint us in any way. Kaya nga blessedness to favor ng Panginoon available to us because we have our living hope the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. So, malinaw naman siguro po yung salita. Ano ba yung naintindihan niyo ba yung heirs? Tagapagmana. Ang tagapagmana, may minamana, may inheritance. So, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sino nag bear witness sa inyo neto? The Holy Spirit Himself that is in you. That in, even if we suffer, it's all good. Because we will be glorified with Christ. If Christ suffered, how can we say we don't want to? So even in the midst of so many trials, we can always look forward because we will be glorified together with Christ. Who, sa verse 14 ng Ephesians, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Christ is the guarantee of our inheritance and Christ is in our lives. So we have this blessedness. Though, sa ating yaw, we still live in this world, we might not, we, we might not possess it in a way na andong ka na. Kasi pag nandong ka na, eh, nakita mo na ang Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka na nakaupo sa Pius dito. Ibig sabihin, kinuha ka na ng Panginoon. Pero tayo nandito pa, alam natin na ganun din ang mangyayari sa atin when He comes for us. And lastly, ang ganda nung ano, no? Eh, eh, yung, yung last portion ng binasa natin, reserved in heaven for you. This eternal possession that we have, this inheritance, nakahanda sa langit para sa atin o sa heaven where God is. Hindi ito iahanda pa lang. Prepared na. Kaya nga, when the Lord Jesus Christ says, I will go and prepare a place for you. So John 14, ready na yan for us. Eh. Nakamay-serve yan. Have you ever experienced traveling? Nagmamadali ka papunta sa, sa airport. Pagdating mo doon, mali pala yung reservation mo. So sadly, mas malungkot yung tama yung reservation mo pero hindi ka pinasakay. Oh, this has happened. When my mom and the rest of my brothers and sisters were coming to New Zealand, kampanting-kampante sila, napapunta na sila na New Zealand. Poto-poto na eh. Poto-poto. Pagdating doon, yung airline nila, ayoko na, hindi ko na ba, I would not mention the airline's name, pero for some reason, they were, they were told na hindi, maraming dahilan. So, dahil gusto nila magpunta na New Zealand, that, that reservation that they have, the ticket that they have presented, not this owner. And you know what happened? They have to go back again sa bahay, book a new ticket, this time, sabi ko kasi sabi na ka magkantas kayo eh. Kung ano kinukuha nyo, yung mura yan, na pamahal na lalo. And yet, so umulit sila, at least the reservation was yung next flight, nakarating sila dito. Pero sadly, hiwahiwalay na yung biyahe. Yung isa nagbiyahe na ng Philippine Airlines. Yung, isa, yung isang grupo nagbiyahe na ng, ng kantas. Pero nakarating sila. Hindi po ganun yung reservation natin on our destination. It is reserved for us. Sigurado po ito. Ang pangalan nyo nakamarka doon. This place is for Brother Glenn Sanchez and family. Do not disturb. <laughs> Ba't ba ganun? Wait, reserve pa. Nahanda na, handa. Then... Lastly, and this is where we will end. Uy. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to rebuild in the la- to be rebuilt in the last time? Yung yung sa atin is yung unang sinasabi natin is uh, reserved for you. Is it is it a sip of fl- place? But but then Peter made it a person who 
are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. These who are us. Tayo mismo. It's not just the, the possession, the inheritance that we will have. But us who are inheriting this possession is being kept by God. Hindi lang siya reservation. Yung, yung being kept here is a military term. Oh, just just think ha, isipin nyo. Who's keeping it? Who, who is keeping us to be with Him? God. And God, in military terms, is what? Shielding us. Ha? Huh? Protecting us. Oh. Guarding us. Hindi lang yung possession mo na naka-reserve, kundi ikaw mismo. This is our living hope. Amen. We are protected by God Himself. Ha? Huh? So yun yung yun. Guarded, shielded, covered, hindi. Kaya nga, when, 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 when the Lord Jesus Christ says, yung, yung kanyang, yung kanyang mga ship, when he, they are in His hands, sa, sa John 10, no one can take them away from my Father's hand, and never can take them away from my hand. Why? Because we are kept. Yung word na kept na yun. Ha? Huh? It is the forever nature of a believer. Si Brother Jonathan, he works for the corrections. And one of the things that they make sure is they keep all the the bilanggors or anong tawag nyo? The prisoners. Kasi naiisip ko pagka sinasabi niya sa amin yan, you're the colloquies. Yan. The colloquies inside the prison that they should be kept what? They should still be alive. That's why they have check. Sabi niya, sindi mo ilaw, make sure na mag-twitch ng konti. Ah, buhay pa siya. Then turn it off. Matulog na. Eh kung yung prisoner nga who has suspended, they're being guarded by the corrections officer and being kept to be alive while still in prison. Tayo, we are what? Sons of God. And He is keeping us. Keeping us forever. Not by our power, the things that we can do. Pansin ninyo salita. By the power of God. Not on the things na, oh, I fell here. Hindi na ako kept. Hindi ka, shielded, guarded ka nga eh. Kaya nga, ewan ko, correct me if I'm true, brother. Even if the prisoner wanted to kill himself, you try to restrain him. Di ba? Part of your obligation. Hindi. Eh, yun yung prisoner. Tayo, anak ng Diyos, kept. Not by our own power, but by the power of God through faith. And, sal and, and for, for salvation ready to be rebuilt in the last time. So, the question now is this. Binanggit ito kanina And I am certain, this is what Paul says, that, and I am certain that God, who began a good work in you, is able to complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. All of us is undergoing a process. Why? Because our God, He is our author and the finisher of our faith. That's why we have to... But focus, keep on looking unto Jesus. Both are all telling one thing. Sure ka sa Panginoon eh, and He will finish it. He will do it. So don't allow the many distractions of this life. Whether it is so severe that you like to give up. Why? Physically, you may want to. But spiritually, the God who is always keeping you will always keep you secure because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. So hopefully, as we live our lives, we understand just the basics. 
Ito naman tinuturo dito. Eh. Understanding the blessings of our living hope. The basis, which is the Lord Jesus Christ of our living hope. And the divine favor of the, or the blessedness of our living hope. Let us not live lives as if we're hopeless indeed. But we have that eternal hope in Christ. Let us all pray. Father God, we just want to praise you and thank you, Lord God, that even in the midst of so many trials, so many testings, just like Apostle Peter going through ups and downs of his life, understanding with full conviction that you, O Lord, who has died for us, who was buried and has resurrected, has made us right in your sight, has caused us to be born again, to be made new. Not because of anything that we have done, but because of well, of your finished work on the cross. I pray, Lord God, that it would, this would cause us to really live for you with the hope that is based entirely in you alone. For we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.